begin. Hello, everybody. Um, I am Mr. Gaming Guitarist, if you didn't know that already, and this is my roommate, or my other one you already saw on them. And earlier before, we were having a discussion on the, about, we were talking about the Xbox One and the PS3, PS4, 360, talking about Sony and Microsoft, and I felt that, that it would be good to film us just talking about the two companies and showing our sides so that you get different perspectives, because um, and normally you only see my perspective. You never see me show, um, sharing my point of view with someone else who thinks differently, so I think this would be make for an interesting discussion, and you guys can watch it. So, uh, is it okay if I call you by your name? No. <laughs> he is wearing a ski mask because he does not want his identity to be shown on YouTube. No, that's not it. I'm an Xbox lover, so he doesn't see my face. <laughs> wow, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. Okay, so, you, all right, so, what is your background? How did you start out from, so you said before you had the PS1 and you had the PS2, so, well, what made you not want to get the PS3? Or did you end up... So how I just did ended you... up playing the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I started playing the Xbox was because of the fact that it came out with Halo, and that was one of the first like straight-up true first-person shooter games that came out with a big success. So well, I, started... I wouldn't say that was the first first-person shooter to be successful, but I could say it's the first hugely successful to start off a con FPS franchise on a home console, because, you know, in the past, there have always been, like, Doom, Wolfenstein, those are FPS yeah, that were Yeah, successful yeah, no, but when it came down to, like, Xbox Live and such... Yes, exactly. That's when it came. Yes, yeah, so yes. that's when I started switching to Xbox and started loving it, because it was, it was the one that really started Xbox Live, honestly. Yeah. yeah. It started well, all that it, Well, I think Halo really helped out the Xbox in general because uh, yeah it, that's what actually got made Xbox give it its name because exactly of Halo. because it, if it wasn't for Halo it wouldn't be shit because did you know that Halo was originally going to be a game that was just on PC and Mac I had a feeling I mean it, it's a Microsoft game it started out like that yeah but you know. I, I heard it did come out for uh, Microsoft first on the, on the computer it came out for the computer first, and then they made it for Xbox. I think they both came out at the same time. I'm not really too well, sure. it was released on the computer. All right, so that's how you start. How you got? So you got to the 360 because uh, so because uh, they kept making more Halos and in so order to you, play the new Halo. So did you play the other Halos before? Mm -hmm. I have all of them. Okay, I have from one all the way up to Reach. Okay, well, did you get Halo Four? Uh, no. But I did play it the other day. It was pretty awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what? The right color one. Yeah, you. All right. So what were the other games that you got? Um. For just here and there, like Call of Duty, stuff like that. Mostly first-person shooter games. I mean, they got Terrock also, stuff that you don't really care about. But I did play one PlayStation's one and two. Mm -hmm. I didn't get PlayStation three because I had a choice between. The PS3 or the new Xbox, and I chose the Xbox at the time because I really wanted to play Halo. Mm -hmm. Now, because you got a 360, now at the time, uh, are, are we both in the frame? Like, can you both see us clearly? Yeah, clearly? definitely. Okay. All right, so... <laughs> so now when you got the PS3, I mean the 360, so you saw, did you see how bad Sony was doing originally? Yeah. Okay. And, um... Yeah, I was lacking big time. Yeah, but then eventually they got their shit back together. And I guess the first sign that things were starting to get better for the PS3 was when the first Uncharted came out. Yeah. Because yeah, that was the time when I saw this, okay, Sony seems to be getting back on track. And I was really shocked when I saw that this was from Naughty Dog, a company that made yeah. Crash Maybe. and Jack and Dexter. I was like, yeah, they, they, how they switched their whole persona out of nowhere. I mean... Crash is like this random cartoon type figure, and they get down to real time. I'm like, wow, they really, really switched their gears, and it somehow came out right. Yeah, and did that make you want? Did Uncharted make you want to get a PS3? Well, I kind of 
I actually played Uncharted when I went to my uncle's house. I played it for the first time, and I was like, wow, this, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, so, did you ever end up getting a PS3? Mm -hmm. No. But, okay. uh, Can you tell us the, the history about how, like, what happened on the online? Like, people say it got hacked. Oh, you don't, so you don't know what happened about that? No, no. Okay, well, um, in April 2011, uh, PSN, the PlayStation Network, it got hacked, and it was down for, like, um, you might correct Months. me in the comments if I'm wrong on this, but I believe it was out for, like, four to five weeks, something like that. And that really sucked at the time because there were two really big games that came out during April 2011, and that was Portal 2 yeah. and the reboot of Mortal Kombat. Do you remember those two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the and Portal 2 had uh, the addition of co-op, whereas the first Portal was yeah. only single player. So a lot of people really wanted to try it, and the thing is, uh, Valve actually had this whole Steam crossover with the PS3 where you could like get a free Valve Steam account or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you watching, uh, please feel free to correct me. Now, um, so how did you... Oh. At, yeah, the time, so, at the time, yeah. uh, when it got hacked, I was kind of like iffy about it because I guess I just fell into like Rumors, people mm -hmm. kept calling it. Oh, that's that's. Yeah, like people got their credit card information taken from them by maybe it was like hundred thousand people. People got people started calling it a hack station. Oh, I, I don't even remember that. But um, yeah, that was that whole thing. But the thing is, afterwards, uh, Sony were gave out a shitload of free games to everyone. Uh, I believe they gave. The first infamous, that that's the only game I know that they give away for free, but a whole other one, I believe it was like five or mm -hmm. ten games. Well, Two, yeah. yeah, but that's the reason why I kind of stepped back from it for a moment. Okay, so so now that you were mainly with, the, with Xbox for this generation, how did you feel um, when you saw the Xbox One for the first time? Like, did you watch that press conference reveal? Yeah, yeah, I saw it, um, me and my dad was looking at it together. Mm -hmm. I, I liked it. I mean, they, they're they stepping up their consumer value. Yeah, I know, when it comes down to gamers, they're probably kind of ticked off a little bit because of the fact that they're kind of veering off the mm -hmm. main part of a gaming system is to play games. But the thing about it is, Xbox, in my eyes, you see them? <laughs> in my eyes, in my eyes, that that's like they made a thing you can't see. <laughs> that oh, I lost my train of thought. Okay, in my eyes, they made a smart um, economics move. You know, because when it comes down to gaming systems having social media and stuff, you don't see a lot of that. You usually have to revert to your phone, or you have to go to the computer, or some way you do it. But now the Xbox has it to where. It could be more social, so basically they're stepping up their Xbox Live, in a way. Because mm -hmm. technically you can be playing your game and have them on a snapshot on Skype looking at them. So like if you're playing one-on-one -on -one or something, you can literally just look at them in the eye and tell them off right then and there. I mean, they're kind of opening it up to where it seems like, like um, back when before Xbox Live was, was even born at the time, you sit next to your friend and y'all could talk mess to each other while y'all playing. Now they made it to where he could be across the country you can still do that same thing. And plus, sometimes when you beat somebody, their facial expression is priceless. And now you get the opportunity to see it. I agree with him on that point. It's badass. Yeah, that, work, that works too. But I feel like I, I kind of really don't like the direction they're taking. And I have been very vocal on how much I dislike Microsoft right now. <laughs> but, of course um, you do. But, I mean, the big picture is, though, they did the smart thing because they opened their own box, meaning they have no competition. They're the only gaming system right now that has actual a lot of social media. Basically, they built their own, like their own city, with no other buildings around it. Just they just can build it from scratch. 
by the time they get like everything settled and someone tries to copy them or do something similar, they're really going to be somewhere high up to where it's going to be hard to even get to them, and economic wise. Well, it had well the PS4 also. It, I mean, the PS4 like you can use Twitter and you can use Facebook and you can do like the whole party system now. But yeah, it doesn't go to the extent that the Xbox One is doing it. In. Yeah, mm -hmm. that part yeah I, I do. Agree with. And then like you know all the extra stuff like you know the snap the the snapshot where you can have multiple screens at once. That can come in handy. I mean, like I was saying earlier, it's like, like it, it, people like when you're when you're playing Xbox and such, and you're watching TV and you you do both of them at the same time. Don't you hate it how you have to switch each of your HDMI cable back to the TV or your input to change it? With this one, you can actually be watching something and go back to your Xbox game on on a flash, like on a on a command. Like, you could be watching TV, and when the commercial come on, and you have one of those TV channels that just have a really long commercials that takes up half of the program, you can easily take that those three, four minutes to pass something that would only take three, four minutes. And with the snapshot, you can see if the TV or the program has came back on, so you can easily say, hey, Xbox, go back. And you can watch it. Yeah. You don't even have to pause it. It'll pause it for you. Yeah, that part, uh, that works well, because you would say, um, Xbox, uh, like, during, yeah, commercials, you could say, Xbox, play game. And then you could say, while the game is going on, you could say, snap TV, so you could see what's going on. But, the thing is, like, that's their only way of doing two things at once, whereas it kind of pushes, I don't know if it does this or not, but, wouldn't it, you, wouldn't it, uh, distract you from seeing the full view, like it would be pushed off to the side and you wouldn't see the full game you're playing while you're doing the other thing that snapped to the side? Well, yeah, that would make sense. I mean, if you're playing Xbox Live... Like it would, like, it, like part of the screen would be missing of your game. Or maybe it resizes it. I hope it resizes it because that would be a pain in the ass if it didn't. But, yeah, but my, my point, my, the way I see it is, like, I don't like this whole thing that they're doing because they're um, completely alienating the audience that made them popular in the first place. Yeah. And, but, like, this whole expanding into entertainment full on, I would be okay with it if they said, X, if uh, they still showed that they still give a shit about their fans, about their original audience. But, yeah, but you have to think about it. The people that were presenting the Xbox, were they like the actual game creators? Because I'm pretty sure if it was the game creator doing it, he would have focused more on it, on games. If it was someone who was just focusing on the, the system itself, of course he's going to flash off the stuff that mm -hmm. is new and everything. But, but if you see like the game mm -hmm. stuff, like if you see like, oh, we did this, we did that to the game to make it better, uh, I think you'd have a, a different point of view because there are some people that like really would be explaining everything. Mm -hmm. Because if they're explaining the system, they're explaining what's new on the system. Because yeah. everybody knows when you get a new system, you're already going to have better graphics and stuff on top of that. And they're going to have, I mean, they're, they're, they're claiming it as a new next gen. So just with that name alone, it's like, okay, the games are going to be better. Just with that title alone. Then they're just telling you the Xbox One uh -huh. also has this. But it feels like they're sh spending more time on the also this rather than the games themselves. But I, it feels like they're changing that now because, uh, did, did you see their E3 conference this year? Uh -huh. um, they focused 100% on all games and I was so happy that they did that because it's, they're trying to say, hey yeah, we are still about games, but I feel like during their original reveal, they didn't do anything with games. The only thing they did was talk, not show, they just talked about EA Sports, and then they showed like a trailer of the developers talking about Call of Duty Ghosts, rather than showing any gameplay for that, because, but, but yeah, that's the thing. First impressions really are yeah, it, make a it, are, are critical, and I yeah, feel like they really failed at that initial first impression. But of course, 
See, I'm not trying to be too negative about it. Like people say, oh, I'm a Sony fanboy. No, I'm just sharing how I really feel about that company. And But I do feel like they can make things turn around because Sony was really shitty at the beginning of the PS3. They turn around at the end. Microsoft was really great at the beginning of the 360, and they ended up being really shitty. But I still feel like there is a prime opportunity for them to go from shit back to greatness. If you take a, if you take a really good look at the statistics, um, fantasy football yeah. is used by a lot of people. I mean, and you can do fantasy true. football on there. Too. They took that step because then you can mm -hmm. actually take the highlights of the players you put on your fantasy football to see what they did instead of just watching a little screen that tells you, okay, he passed, and they put a line. They're up there. No, they show the actual play of what your player you picked, the player you picked did, because it the Xbox records the players you have. If their name pops up in the pass they did or a block they did, it will record that one play, like a, like a highlight reel, just for your fantasy team. And they did that because, I'm guessing, Microsoft saw how many people were using fantasy football. They took that into consideration. Okay, if we put this on the Xbox, we might draw people towards the Xbox saying, hey, they have fantasy football, you can help me out. You know? I mean, they just literally just open a whole new variety of customers to Yeah, them. but another thing that I, that I just thought about is the audience that they're talking, that they're trying to get to. They're, they're trying to get non-gainers, but the thing is, why would those people pay $500 for those things that they can all, that they're already doing, like sports was a big thing. Like those people, they can pay for cable subscriptions to like, like NFL season pass or season ticket or whatever that's called where they can watch like all the games. So if they're already paying that, then why would they pay five hundred dollars to do that to just to plug in their receiver uh, to the Xbox One when they don't really care about games too much? Well, why would they do that? That I don't have a question for, eh, answer for, but from what I know from playing Xbox Live a lot and talking with a lot of male players, usually when they have their free time running in the lobby, they're always talking about sports, football. A lot of the people who play games mm -hmm. like that are football people. Yeah. So what they Xbox just made it more comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess you could say uh, that they are advertising f the gamers to the people that also do sports mm -hmm. as well. I mean, like they, I mean, it's pleasing okay. the gamers. That makes more and sense. On top, mm -hmm. I mean, you have that. I mean, don't get me wrong. People who are not gamers wouldn't want the Xbox. But in a percentage, it'll be like one out of three people who get the Xbox just for that reason. Mm -hmm. Like my father alone, he plays Call of Duty here and there, but he, he, that that fantasy football thing caught his eye the most. Yeah. Because he he's always done some fantasy football, and he's like, wow, that's awesome. So I guess it's good for those people because there's some people where they only buy two games a year. They only buy Call of Duty, and then they only buy Madden. And so I guess it's perfect for people like that that are really casual gamers and they still want to get the newest Madden, the newest Call of Duty every year when they come out and there will be times when uh, the, they're going to stop making games for the 360. So those people at the 360, they're, they're going to have to get the Xbox One and, because and that's like, where all their friends are at and mm -hmm. so people yeah, who, that makes sense. Who, people who play Madden, which is a majority of the gamers these days, if they, if they cut off um, the, the Madden makes for it, Xbox 360 to Xbox One. When they get the Xbox One, obviously whoever plays Madden also has a fantasy football league somewhere. Yeah. So if they get the Xbox One, they just got a bonus on top of that. Yeah. Technically. And for me, like coming from someone that doesn't give two shits about sports, like none of that stuff uh, appeals to me. But uh, I can see how, like, I don't know if you can do this in Madden or not. But like, can you create your own teams? In there, like you can like make. Does Madden can't have I don't think fantasy it, football things where you can take the players that are on your fantasy team and put them against each other so you could play, play it like that? Because I'm not way. sure, but back when it was on Xbox One, like the very very, I'm like talking the very original old, Xbox. Yeah, not the Xbox One. I'm sorry, I called. That's the, the other thing that I hate. Yeah, their I'm marketing. sorry. I have to agree with that. That the, name, the name is fucking stupid. Xbox. I'm serious. If you if you ever watch this. That name was not the best. I love you guys. I really do, but I used to call the original Xbox the Xbox One. And now when I say it, people are like the new one? No. 
<laughs> and that's exactly the thing I hate. You see, Microsoft, I don't, oh know, maybe, <laughs> I don't know if you knew this, but Microsoft, they named the Xbox, uh, they named the, the 360 the 360. They didn't want to call it the Xbox 2 because they thought it would look inferior to the PS3 because there's Xbox 2, PS3, you know, would mm. make them sound inexperienced. And now it makes even less sense because they're calling their third console Xbox One, and now it's going up against the PS4, so wouldn't that make it seem hold even up, less... Hold up. But I am a man of optimism, and I do, I can tell you what the good part of it is. It's, uh, they said they're calling it the Xbox One because it's your all-in-one entertainment exactly, device. Exactly, like, you know, you got everything, you but got, that, they you got could, first of all. They could have come up with a better name. <laughs> I totally agree on this point of view. It could have changed into something more better besides the Xbox it, One. It would have sounded better than the Xbox AIO. All-in-one. Maybe. It, that sounds better than the one because yeah. now when people say Xbox One, you gotta ask them, are you talking about the first one? We're talking about the third one. See, the rumors were this was going to be called the Xbox 720 because it's 360 times two. That was I thought the 720 was a terrible name, but that is less stupid than calling it the Xbox, Xbox one. one. I mean, you could have saved the name Xbox Elite for this one. That one that would have fit perfectly. Right? True. I mean, it would have fit perfectly. Or you could have had like I don't know Xbox Omega. Some people were going to call, there were other rumors <laughs> saying this would be called the Xbox Infinity. That's a double wow. But, but that's, that's just copying the cable company. Because that's the, X the company actually Infinity. made a game called Infinity X Blade, Infinity. Though. Infinity. so it's different. It would have been kind of funny if it was called the Xfinity, mm -hmm. because Xbox Infinity, and they would have been sued by Comcast. I just, I completely agree with both of you guys on so both of your terms. I clearly agree because they have some bad sides and they have some good sides. They yeah. both have back and good. But like with Mr. Game Guitar said, I do think they'll rise back up, but they need, they really need to get they a good comeback. They need to find a way to get their original audience. If y'all do uh, understand this They need this to video. find a way to make their original audience excited. Why should you get this Xbox again? Because I feel like their exclusives are... It's like they're almost non-existent. They're, okay, because the thing is, um, Microsoft has, when you think about it, the exclusives that Xbox has, like the real prime, oh, prime ones, many. was Halo, Forza, Fable. That's it. What does PlayStation have? They have Uncharted, God of War, Little Big Planet. I'm making myself look. Um, not your fault. And not kill, that. kill zone, <laughs> kill zone, knack. My God, my brain is fried. Holy shit! Why I don't I... really blame them. Like they I... have so. Okay, the thing is, the fact of the matter is, Sony owns twelve or fourteen studios, so they have all these people making games for Sony as a publisher. Correct. Microsoft. They're not really doing anything because they're not using their their first party as much as I want them to. Because, for example, Microsoft owns Rare. Rare is a company that back when Nintendo was here. Yeah, because they made Donkey Kong Country, Golden Eye, sixty four, Perfect Dark, Banjo Kazooie, all of they made those games, and then Microsoft bought them. And what have they made? They made a remake of Con of Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> I played that game on the computer. <laughs> yeah, it's and funny. Then, you should try it. You should really try it. It's and then funny. they made uh, they made uh, Viva Pinata. No, don't try that one. <laughs> and <then they> made, <laughs> uh, that's my they, opinion. They made Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. That's a good game. That's my childhood game. Nuts and Bolts, the newest one. Huh? Well, Banjo Kazooie. Period. Yeah, that was good. And then they all. But the thing that pisses me off utterly is that. Right now, uh, Rare is making all these Kinect, my, these Kinect games, which are more like tech demos to me. Because the thing that I hate, is I hate Kinect games. I mean, they're cool. They're all right. They are, the thing that I hate, I is play the, two. They're yeah, all right. Microsoft I play Power Play Heroes and one more. They're they're I mean, all right. Don't get me wrong. I love them, but then I hate them at the same time. I'm a controller guy. <laughs> because Microsoft, they're really not lazy. Not, they're not. They're really not proving a showcase to Kinect. 
as to why this is useful because all, all of the games, there isn't this one game that's making all these hardcore gamers or hardcore people that play games with controller all the time. That they're, they're not making a game for those people that are saying, no, hey, no. here's why the Kinect is cool. Here's a game that you absolutely must play. Like, it is a must-have. There are no must-have games with the Kinect, and I feel like... They try to. They try to make Ghost Recon a Kinect game. What did you do? <laughs> I totally complete with Mr. Gaming Guitarist. Like, There's if... nothing that's justifying the cost of why it's $500 right now. Like, I don't think Microsoft should do that. Like, just because it's Kinect doesn't mean it should be 400 cause, I mean, 500 because of the Kinect. It can't yeah. just do that. Because cause what you did that, you because missed so many players' opinions about what y'all did. Like, so many of them. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is a double-edged sword. Definitely. Because Microsoft wants Kinect to be a main part. But they're doing that by uh, including it in the system. No, it, you but, know why they're, they're, but they're making it more expensive, and that's really turning it off. So basically, you know why yeah. it's expensive? Because they know the consumers, our parents. Yeah, that's Just true. Our parents, because a lot of the Kinect games are kitty games. Basically, stuff that's not M rated. It's right. stuff that okay. families. Oh, there are. were M rated Kinect games, but they were fucking awful. Exactly. I agree so with you. A lot of the games. But not Power Play Heroes. I don't care what you say. Power Play Heroes was bad and I liked it. Yeah, that was it. No lie, that was awesome. Yes, but it was. Stuff like Dance Central, Just Dance. Yeah, I did like that. that. Attract other people. Like, you know, parties? Or, yeah. Like, but what my about dad the got that for my sisters. Yeah, but what about the people like us? There isn't a Kinect game for gamers like us yeah, that but, really but, get into it. That's yeah. what I want to see. Okay, that, yeah, yeah. That's true, but... Yeah. Yeah. But, true, but, but, see, if you really think about it, people, no, the gamers don't, I mean, the game designers don't put a lot of, as much time in Kinect games as they do for us. Like, Call Basically. of Duty and stuff, uh, Halo, they put hours... They sweat, months, yeah. their blood. They might get a paper cut or something. <laughs> Definitely. Into those games for connect people. Oh, just do this, do that. And I think the reason why it was like that on the 360 is because it was um, because there weren't they too many people that had connect. So like if for example like Ghost Recon, Vance, Warfighter, t Future Soldier in that game like they the connect features were minimal because. Not every single per 360 owner had a Kinect, but I think now that they're pack including the Kinect with the Xbox One, they can make full-on more useful, more integrated Kinect features no, because see, it's in every box. See, I think Xbox plays dominant. I mean, not not like now, but I mean, he they try to play dominant because when the Xbox first came out, it was basically about you know. Multiplayer, Halo was a big thing, so they wanted to start making a lot of stuff to expand it even more. When the Wii came out, out of nowhere, the Wii started making family games with yeah. movement and stuff. Yeah. Xbox was like, hold up. We want to make something that's even better because the Wii remote was awesome. You can move your arm with the controller. Now you are the controller. Now, in the, in the Kinect, a Wii could do better. Now you're the controller. You know how many people were playing their Wii, Wii U wanted the Xbox Connect so bad? They switched from Wii to the Xbox. Just like that because they True. upped their standards. Yeah. Like. Xbox, they said, basically what they do is they look at the competition and say what we can do better. Basically, see what they have. Yeah. In my own opinion, I think they're both right. Mr. Ham Guitars and this awesome dude over here have their own opinions all right. I'm mean, all I'm trying to say is Microsoft needs to step up a little bit, just a little, not too much. Like support, you can get your players back because you lost so many because of what you did. If maybe you thought this over, you'd have got your players back. But you had to come up with a big comeback. If you don't, y'all lose your players for life. I'm just saying, bro. And the reason is like it, like these fanboys. It's for them. I mean, for most people, it's a passion product that you're buying into because like some people, like I guess you could say us. Us Basically. hardcore gamers. If you, what is a hard? Okay, that's a whole other video. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, anyways, whenever you um, like these people, like they already know what they're going to buy. Like they see things that they want, they're going to buy it, and nothing will change. They don't buy it. The parents buy it for them.
Because, and the thing is, what can the people do? What can uh, see? What can Microsoft do to make uh, those gamers excited again? What can they do to make them want to buy an Xbox One? They better think of something fast. Yeah. Hardcore gamers are very competitive. Basically. Obviously. They just Titanfall. That's one good step. T Titanfall is one good because you show me the gameplay, Mr. Game Guitars, because it's very good. Because you see the soldier and whatnot going out and shooting other people. He hops into a robot and fires from a robot. That's kind of cool. It's a little bit like Halo, but gigantic size Halo, in my own opinion. And it's a war. And that Gears is... of War was a very, very good success for Microsoft. Yeah. It right. was good. That no. was tough. You know how many people love Gears of War? Yes, definitely. Yeah, but the Disgusting. thing with Gears of War is, yes, it was a great game and I love it. But you see, that is a game that Microsoft... Uh, published like that is a that is like a third party. It's a, Gears of War is, a f it was a second party game because it is made by Epic Games, a, th a third party studio that made that was making a game exclusively for a platform. And the thing is, I want Microsoft to get more first party studios that are dedicated to making games only for Xbox. That's what they need to do to get more gamers excited. More good exclusive games that you can get only on the Xbox to the, on the same level as Gears of War. Like, they should make games, that, that hardcore games like that, not like Gears of War, but just AAA. That's the word I'm looking for. More AAA games exclusively. I would say I want them to come out on the same frequency as uh, as Sony's doing, that's how they can get back into the market. Well, you, you know, Sony had to step up his game when that hack happened. Yeah, definitely. They're, like, they're, 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 God, I mean, they were so bad. Yeah, but they, boy, the they moment, yeah, they, they have recovered. Yeah, I mean, they had to. Their, their whole reputation, their whole monopoly was on the line. I mean, the moment someone said PlayStation, everybody's like, no, nah. already. already. I mean, I like PlayStation because their story modes are awesome. Basically. Exactly. That's what I want. I want good campaigns, good stories to come good out. Good storylines, not cut and half storylines. I mean, it started from the PlayStation 1. And I guess that's because of me. Like me, I'm not into multiplayer. I'm not uh, a competitive, I'm not a competitive bro People douche. People love being competitive bro. The thing with me is I love being immersed in... You shouldn't in, be talking. You got whooped yesterday. The thing with me is hey, I love... Silence! I love being immersed in a good story. Um, that's that's me. That's why PlayStation appeals to me. Of course, me. you love a good story. Look, you do. look, look. I, I love it all. Honestly, I love good stories. So PlayStation Definitely. is awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. And the but thing is, it depends on the story. It's on games. I like PlayStation. I love PlayStation. I love Xbox. You heard me, you fucking assholes. I love Xbox too, but. I'm just being very critical towards them if because you, I don't like what they're doing right now, and, I, and I'm just sharing my thoughts on what I want them to. Both of us are having a discussion on what I want them to do to improve. And I'm just a camera guy. And I'm not buying the Xbox One because I don't support you? what they're doing. We get you, right? ninja. I'm not. Up, buying, man? I'm not buying an Xbox. Let's do this. You can do this all the time, man. Let's go. And Let's I, go I, back and do this, man. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm not buying an Xbox One because I'm not supporting what they're doing right now. But once they start doing things that I like, then I'll get an Xbox One. I so, might buy one. That's the, that is my thoughts on this whole Microsoft Xbox One situation. Do you have any? So, do you have any final thoughts? Final thoughts. Before you say something, I want to say something. I might get the Xbox One because me and Mr. Gaming Talks agree. Because once I get it, we'll do we'll show you a video of how it is through my eyes. If I don't like it, I'm gonna see what Mr. Gaming Talks will do with it. Because if it pisses me off, which he knows it might do, it might. I'm gonna give it to him. If your viewers say fuck me, forget you guys. I don't care what you guys think. I have my own opinion. Okay, okay. Back to Ninja, <laughs> and forget you. I'm gonna whoop you with Halo. I'm going to. So forget you. Yeah, you, you asked for death with homie. Bring it on, homie. Death with all day, every day, okay. man. Audience, I want to hear your comment on this. If I beat this dude, I mean, if y'all played Halo, you should understand. If I beat this dude with only a sword, 20 to 2. And this, if you know on multiplayer, when you have a sword, you're only allowed 10, 10 kills with it until it dies. 
I was still using the sword after it died. I was just beating him. Forget you. Oh, you man. mean you were just using it as just a melee weapon? Yeah. Forget <laughs> <That's enough. laughs> you, man. I was just, the whole time, this dude. That's just me. Forget you. I don't care, man. All right, and on that note, Wait. um. But. What? Okay. Okay. Me as a universal gamer, I like both the competitiveness and the campaign. PlayStation has an awesome cam campaign ever since the PlayStation 1. I originated from that. The reason why Xbox was stepped up so highly is because of their multiplayer. When Halo first came out with multiplayer and they figured out people loved it, they focused on that and look how far they've gotten. PlayStation has been sticking to their campaigns. You all, when you think of a good story, you always think of PlayStation, and sometimes we, sometimes, but mostly PlayStation. They have all these awesome, awesome story modes. Xbox is based off of multiplayer. It's more social, so it makes sense to want to build that social media even higher, because they came up from the world because of multiplayer. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I think it does. Okay. All right, so you guys in the comments, let us know what you, what did you think of this video? Did you like it? Did you hate it? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what you thought about get out it. Get out of here, Blackie. Hey, get you, man. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you like these kind of videos, if you want to see more of them, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. Hey, really drop the Xbox out. controller, it bro. Help, it would help in bring back my dream of... Wanting to do make videos like this for a living. Please so. comment on Mr. Gaming Guitarist's channel, please. All right, thank so you very yes, much. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.